It's hard to hit a moving target, amen? But if you stand still long enough, somebody's going to be able to shoot at you. So we need to move out of the way of sin, amen, so that it cannot find us. Praise God. We need to block sin's call. Hallelujah. Change our number. Change our address. He said, I want to do right, but evil is always present with me. I want to live free from my own ways, but I can't hide from me. I can't get away from me. But the Bible said, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There is a hiding place where we cannot be found. There is a place of protection, and there is a place of refuge, and it is in Christ Jesus. Psalm 91 and verse 1, amen, says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. We can hide in Christ. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that we ought to have our lives hid with Christ in God. There is no better hiding place. Unfortunately, some of us are hiding from God instead of hiding in God. I say some of us are hiding from God instead of hiding in God. There is a difference, amen. As a matter of fact, all we can do is try to hide from God. Just like you can't beat him giving, no matter how you try, you can't hide from him. You can run, but you can't hide. Amen. There was a story on Facebook. This man was a babysitter. Supposed to be watching over a young child, a young boy father came home and found that so-called man assaulting that boy. He did what any father would do. He beat the mess out of him. I don't blame him one bit. I responded to that and I said, I don't know what I would do if I saw somebody mess with my son. I could feel my blood boiling just thinking about it. He beat the man so bad that his eyes were black and blue and almost shut closed. Blood was coming out of his mouth, and he was laying in a pool of blood on the floor. He called 911 and said, officers, come and get him. He said, yeah, I beat him because I caught him doing this. And one, for once, I can say the police did the right thing, and they did not charge the father. Amen, because he did what any father would do. This had been going on for three years. But the child was so scared, he did not say anything. That joker thought he was going to get away with what he was doing, but he got by, but he could not get away. Because once the father found out, he took care of him. The Lord Jesus watches over us. God, our Father, watches over us. And when the enemy tries to mess with you, when he tries to disturb your life, when he tries to destroy you, tries to, to tear you down and tear you apart, God sees everything. He might let him get by for a season, but he will surely not get away. Amen? God will take care of you, and he will take care of me. Hallelujah to the Lamb. If we dwell in the secret place, we will be saved. The title for this message is Hide and Go Seek. 
ready or not, here I come. Hide and go seek, ready or not, here I come. We all played that game. I think most of us probably played that game, hide and go seek. Amen. It would be behind a tree or whatever, do, do something, cover the eyes. Countdown from a hundred, right? <laughs> Got to give people time to hide, right? Some people will count quick, right? And everybody would scatter and find their place. And then the person that was it had to go find and each one. <laughs> so when they found the last one, that person became it. There's some variations on the game, but that's mostly how it went, right? <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. Sometimes it would say, ready or not, here I come. Jesus said he's coming back for a church. Whether you're ready, or not. It's not going to be time to get ready, but we have to be ready and stay ready. We can't hide in our sin, amen, hoping that the Lord won't see us, because the Bible said that the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. In Proverbs 15.3, I think it is. Proverbs 15.3, I believe that's where that's found. I believe. You'll find out for sure when you check it out. Amen. Hallelujah. If we want to be safe and protected, we have to live our lives hidden in Christ. There is no safety. There is no refuge outside of him. Outside of him, we are open to every attack, every influence, and every power. But when we are in the center of the Father's hand, covered with the blood of Jesus, the enemy can't get to us. Amen? Hallelujah. You've got to walk all over the Father's hand and go through blood to try to get you. But the Lord will only get, let him get so far, only mess with you so much. So every time we go through anything, we need to remember that the Lord is allowing this to happen. So therefore, I will not complain. That's a hard thing. It's a hard thing not to complain. It's a very easy thing to find fault with our situation. And sometimes we even blame God, don't we? Can I talk to the honest church? Lord, if it was not for you, I wouldn't be going through this. Sometimes we take matters into our own hands and say, I'm going to do me. Sometimes we try to hide, amen. We try to isolate ourselves and hide from the hand of God. But really what happens is all we're doing is getting ourselves in trouble. Amen. Slipping and sliding, peeping and hiding. All we're doing is getting ourselves in trouble. Doing it in the dark. But the Bible said that everything is naked and open to his eyes, and he don't miss nothing. So we cannot hide from him. We need to hide in him. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes we get a certain age, and we start getting interested in the opposite sex. Amen. And we start wondering what it would be like to kiss him. I'm going to keep it clean. Amen. Because some people don't need much encouragement. Amen. They go too far. I started liking girls at a very young age. I think I was in kindergarten. Amen.
It is what it is. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Thank the Lord that he saved me. <laughs> but some of us, you know, we get interested and we get curious. And then we start to experiment and play around. And when we do that, we find ourselves getting onto dangerous territory. We find ourselves going into dangerous places, doing dangerous things. And then we get upset when things go wrong. Amen. Well, if we would stay away from sin, then sin could not catch us. Amen. The Bible says, flee also youthful lust. And that's the only time the Bible tells us, there's two times the Bible tells us to run. One time it tells us to flee from youthful lust, and the other times it tells us to run the race with patience. Those are the two times it's supposed to run. Any other time it's supposed to stand and fight. But there's something about fornication that is so deep that the Bible tells us to run from it. Did not say sit around and see how far you can get without going all the way. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he didn't tell us that. He said flee from it. See, because everywhere you go is there. Is looking for you, trying to find you, trying to have its way with you, trying to make you give in to it. Amen. I had a girl tell me I had a, a, a pimple on my face. <laughs> girl told me it was a do it bump. I mean, Wow. I thought it was acne. <laughs> we can't put ourselves in situations that lend themselves to failure and expect to succeed. If I want to succeed, I got to do the things that will cause me to be a success. I've got to run from fornication, not run to it. Amen. Run from youthful lust, not run to them. Somebody said, well, you know, I'm young. That's why the Bible said run from youthful lust. Well, ain't no harm in kissing. That's where it starts. You get the kissing and grabbing and squeezing. Next thing you know, the clothes are coming off. It's all over them. But if you hadn't done the kiss in the first place, amen, you would have been kept. So we ought not to put ourselves in that situation. Sometimes it starts with just a smile. <laughs> yes, sir, Colgate smile. <laughs> or what's that other one, close up? Uh-huh. That's all it starts with, amen. Girl knows just how to smile at you to get your attention. Amen. God knows just how to, you know, flex the chest muscles and arm muscles. How you doing? You know? Say the right words, be all smooth and everything. I'm not going to demonstrate it, man. 
Can't do it. Can't do it. Got to keep the, that smooth as reserved for my wife. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Because the Bible said marriage is honorable and all in the bed undefiled. Amen. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Amen. So we need to be watchful. Keep our eyes open. The Bible warns us about the woman who talks with a smooth, oily voice and knows just how to say the right thing, right? It warns against the guy who flatters with his words. In other words, watch out for the game. Amen. Don't get gamed. Don't play the game. Watch out for the game. Amen. When they come with the game, call on his name. Amen. Glory to God. That'll set them straight. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. God come up to you. Hey, baby, what's your name? Jesus! Right? Back that took off real quick. What? Gee, whoa. Right? I'm out of here. Thank you, Jesus. So if we want to be safe and protected, we have to hide our lives with Christ and God. Colossians 3 and 3 says that our lives are hid with Christ and God. If we treasure our relationship with the Lord, we have to protect it. Sad to say, some of our relationship is a hidden treasure, and nobody knows we have one. But it ought not to be a hidden treasure, amen? Jesus said men don't light a candle and put it under a bushel. He said a city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. That's why it's so important for us to go out. After all, the name of the church is Outreach Miracle Center, right? To go out and win souls to the kingdom of God. To do that, we got to tell them about his goodness. Tell them about his grace. Amen. Somebody said, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself what the Lord has done for me. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I don't know about your soul, 